Good morning, good evening, uh, wherever you are. Um, welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 388. Uh, each week we meet here to uh, answer um, the questions raised on the uh, Dumb SEO Facebook group. Um, with us tonight, uh, we have a very special guest, Rob Mars. Uh, Rob uh, hasn't been with us for a while. Um, Rob is a, an AdWords aficionado. He is uh, based in the Netherlands. Tim Kappa, based about 100 miles north of um, London uh, in Corby. He uh, um, is an, a, a, a Google product expert in the uh, uh, Google My Business community. Uh, he is an SEO uh, um he can be found at onlineownership.com. Uh, and Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Um, he's uh, also a Google product expert on the uh, AdSense uh, community. And David Rosam is uh, uh, he's a, a leading internet marketer. He's based in the sunny south of the UK. Um, he <laughs> not sunny, and he um, um, can be found at davidrazam.com. All right, let's uh, have a look. We, we have a um, four, only four questions tonight. Let's um, have, have, have a look at them now. I, I'm not sure if we've got any uh, uh. Um, and we're, uh, sorry, we're, if we've got any uh, YouTube um, specialists, uh, if we did, I'm sure we'd have more visitors to our uh, excellent repository of uh, questions asked on uh, Dumb SEO questions. Uh, but anyway, um, guys, uh, can anybody uh, enlighten us uh, or enlighten Arta or Riemann? Um, um, on uh, a checklist for YouTube channel and video SEO. Don't fight over it. No, I thought it, I thought that would be the response. Um, ah, well. Okay, we'll move on to the next. I, I did see a, one lady uh, answered um, with a a, um, a a checklist. So I would look for uh, this question on the Damasio Questions Facebook group. All right, here's question two on our run list. It's from Arsen Sahail. Um, it, it's titled Need a Guidance for Guest Posting. He said, it's my first time that I'm applying this link building strategy, which is guest posting. I'm sorry, Arsen, that is not a strategy. It's a recipe for failure. Um, he said, I'm writing an email script for guesting posting. Uh, should I mention in my email that I want a backlink? Is, does this count as a bad practice? Um, is, is there any uh, further advice uh, if you guys can give? Uh, then it would be great. Uh, it's uh, this is a this is one of those that uh, we we say many times. It's a recipe for getting into the poo. Um, it's it's setting up. Uh, a load of spam to send send it out to people to annoy, should we say, the poo out of them, uh, and it, it doesn't really matter whether you're asking whether you uh, whether you want to backlink or not. Um, it's not good practice to. You know, are you paying for these things? If 
that that's that's a bad thing um and you know the 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 basic uh the, the the basic advice is put your effort into creating posts on your own site um don't put uh your effort into creating great stuff for other people's sites um i'm sure there's lots more to be said but the basically this is a daft idea um and you're wasting your time Thank you, David. Um, the other, anybody else? <laughs> yeah, look, the other thing is, is if, if there is a site that, um, you know, that is following um, Google's guidelines, okay, best practice and guidelines, your link is either going to be no followed, it's going to be, um, or, or it's going to be, uh, um, oh God, what's the other one? Uh, sponsorship. If you pay for it, sponsorship or whatever. So essentially, look, you're going to put all this freaking effort in. Then you're going to have to write a pretty decent article. Okay. And then at the end of the day, it, what, what's it worth? So you need to start thinking about if you had something published somewhere, what is that link going to do for you in terms of traffic, right? Because you have put effort into creating content. And I'm going to, like, for the sake of this, assume that you're actually outreaching to something that is, you know, of good quality, that, that, that actually gets read, that, you know, gets traffic. Um, so you're going to have to, you know, come up with some pretty decent content that they're going to want to publish. So they publish it. Now, regardless of whether they publish it or not, what is the benefit to you? Because take out the link, you know, situation. Completely forget about that link. What is that content going to do for you? For where you put in it? You know, you need to think of, am I going to get a thousand people that convert a year out of that link? Don't think of fucking link juice or page rank or any of that sort of rubbish, right? Think of what that page is going to do for you and your business, right? And, and that is all you should worry about, not mythological freaking page rank and link juice that you, you can't, quant, you, you know, you can't evaluate, you, you can't put anything to it. So it's like there's no point going out there, spending all this time creating content and at the end of the year, when you look on your analytics and you never got a single freaking visit from that site, what was the point of it? That's wasted time, money, and effort. Just just thrown away. So, you know, you need you need to start really thinking about you know your your site as a business and stop thinking about mythological things that you know that may or may not exist. Yeah. Yeah. We can still hear you, Rob. Don't quote your bank account details. Thank you. All right. So thank you, Tim. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's uh, move on to the next. Um, did you have anything to add to that uh, question, uh, Rob, before we move on? Uh, the only thing I would have to add is that you shouldn't be looking for links and that it's nice if your content earns links, but you shouldn't be looking for the links as such. And I think Tim did a wonderful job of explaining that. <laughs> okay. I have to say that years and years ago when privacy policies were, were a new thing, uh, I, I put a, a, a pro forma uh, um, privacy poly policy on a website and accidentally left a link in it. Um, and um, people... Uh, 
uh, came along and, and used the suggested privacy policy um, as as that was the whole plan, um, but they didn't take out the link. And so um, I got hundreds of links um, accidentally. You know, I mean, so that, that there is there is a way to, to win now and again. All right, let's go to the next. Um, this one is from Sarah Adams. How to avoid, Tim will love this one, keyword cannibalization uh, when uh, publishing annual reports. Um, Sarah said uh, she's working with a publisher who puts out a lot of content each year for an annual best of report slash survey. They want to build a hub where all of the content will live and the hub page would target brand name best of um, and they have a bunch of supporting URLs as they promote it and write uh, various um, articles uh, about it in addition to having one URL with the results and a bunch of URLs for past results. This means they'll have one hub page, one, hub page, one current result page, five to six past result pages and supporting articles. How do I avoid cannibalization for something like this? They want to clean up the search engine result pages and I can do that by making it clear of the year in metadata. Um, but not sure how to avoid cannibalization um, when similar content uh, is targeting the same type of search. Well, in this instance, you're not you're not necessarily cannibalizing stuff. You know, you need to understand. You know, and and you also need to be a re you know you or your client needs to be pretty realistic that if you're producing the same thing X title and a different year, year on year, you are going to have, at some point, you know, um, Google is going to go, okay, right, well, we've got a bunch of these. Which one is uh, firstly the most relevant? Because it doesn't always work on date. You know, they're not necessarily going to just show 2021 in the 2021. If the 2019 report actually, um, you know, was like, that year was the blockbuster. It generated <laughs> a lot more mentions online. It built up uh, quite a few links, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's not a question of avoiding keyword cannibalization because you can't. You know, there are literally they're all going to be the same apart from the date. What I uh, recommend you certainly do is um, rather you know you know a lot of places like will have related to like related articles related either in the side or in the footer of the article <coughs> what i would what i would probably do is um i would make sure that in in in, in the sort of top half of of each uh of you know of each of these and of course because they're going to be growing year on year is just to make sure that you have a uh, a, a link in there so if somebody clicks into 2019, checks 2019 and goes, ah, they can above the fold see, ah, hang on, there's the 2022 or the 2021 that I actually wanted to look at. And they can quickly navigate to that, right? So, you know, you've already attracted them and, and, and then you're going to keep them on site. You're going to get them to the right one relevant that they want. It, um, it, it's just the way it is. You know, Google is not specifically going to show 2021s in 2021 um and, uh, for the reasons I already said um so the best the best thing you do there is um just make sure that you know above the fold you're actually providing something uh, something to let them know here is this year's latest one um and then they can follow through to it uh, and of course then you're interlinking all of them um but you, you you're going to have overlap and the client needs to know this, you know, you can't, it's, it's just the way it's going to go. Thank you, Tim. I think the other thing is, um, it's a while since I've done anything quite like this online, but um, what I seem to remember is that a lot of the, um, um, a, a lot of your searches are going to be uh, with a date on the end. 
the people who are interested in up-to-date best of survey type information uh, were certainly in the past appending a date to it because they want the most up-to-date information so you know you, you they'll be saying instead of cheese sandwiches they'll be saying cheese sandwiches 2020 or cheese sandwiches 2021 um and hopefully um google would have figured out where your 2020 or 2021 pages are um so you know it's possibly something you're overthinking um have a look see what searches are going on but certainly when i was involved in a site like this there was the the searches sorted it out thank you david all right, so before we move on, is there anybody else? Okay. By the way, before I do move on, I just want to point out um, people like Michael Stricker, um, Ethan Luzak is a new person stepping up to the plate and answering questions uh, on our, our dumb SEO questions uh, Facebook group. Ammon Johns and, uh, of course, Michael Martinez. Um, Guys with um, literally decades of experience in search engine optimization, um, stepping up to answer immediately um, through the week. Um, yeah, it's just amazing. I, I, I just can't believe it's happening. Anyway, number five on our run, sorry, number four on our run list is not, uh, number. It's uh, Scott Clark. Um, when a brand name evolves at the same organisation as the title, um, Scott goes on to say, um, does the knowledge graph maintain awareness of equivalence in assigning, assigning brand affinity to queries? I'm going to have to take a week off to figure that out. Um, he said, uh, are there uh, ways to improve this? Uh, there has been no change in domain name. For example, let's say a brand evolves uh, uh, over 10 years from integrated sensors uh, to durable sensors, Inc. And uh, to Dura, Dura Sensors, Inc. And uh, has been producing content the whole time. Uh, search queries continue uh, for all three variations. Um, well, as long as Google obviously can find um, sort of documentation of naturally you want to in a situation like that certainly keep up with like you, you know the wikipedia page of, of of it for example however you can also define this um in you know structured data uh, and also the other thing is like the knowledge graph um the knowledge graph you know the, that domain that domain itself should actually um uh you know uh, claim it um with your you know with your domain and and search console so that you can manage it um but you can also define it in your structured data your organization structured data uh like with additional t like uh shit, not additional time um um fuck awesome oh god Anyway, you can define it in your structured data, like, you know, under your name, and then it would be, uh, God, I'm going to have to, I've, you know, I, I lost so much sleep this week over freaking um, sorting out hotel, some hotel structured data. Uh, hang on, let, let's just quickly check the schema organization quickly. Um,
You can use brand, uh, part of, or uh, you can use dissolution. You can use, yeah, there's, there's a few different ones you can actually use. Um, just to just to make sure that um, you know you, you you're using that within your structured data. Uh, obviously, we're not saying Google always uses it, or but at least you know you you're doing your part to to maintain that. Oh, well, there we go. Ethan says same as, but I don't know about same as. Mm. Yeah, you can use same as, and then you can do it to, yeah, the thing is, you're not going to, yeah, I don't know if you're going to have a Wikipedia entry for those previous brand names when it started, so that same as, I don't know what you're going to reference in there. Mm. Yeah, well, you could use alternate name, which is an alias of it, and that you can actually put in without actually having to link to a, you know, sort of a Wikipedia or a Wikidata entry. Um, yeah, so there's a few ideas there. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else with something to add to this one? This is a great question. Okay. All right. Um, I think when I click this button, we're going to see, yes, it's thank you for watching time. Okay. We've, we've done it again, guys. We've answered all of the questions asked on the, the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, this week, uh, for some reason or other, uh, um, our, our membership went up about 25%. Um, people coming from everywhere asking for approval. And, um, yeah, um, uh, I can't, can't believe the, that... Uh, we only ended up with four questions. Uh, there were just so many people. Uh, normally, people ask a question when they first arrive. Anyway, um, there we are. Um, look, I'd like to thank people like Michael Stricker, Michael Martinez, um, Ammon Johns, and um, uh, Ethan uh, Lacuse. Uh, I think I'll, I'll try and remember that for, for next time. Um, the people who answered questions throughout the week are on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. We'll be back uh, here at the same time next week. First, I must thank uh, Masataki and uh, David and Tim and Rob Mars. Thank you guys for your valuable contribution. The, 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 the part, you're the part that makes uh, um, Dumb SEO Questions such a, a valuable resource. Um, okay, let's turn this off and we'll, we'll do it again some seven days hence. Um, there we go.